uh, about attraction, how God uh, established a, a, a world. You know, the whole world is based on magnetic forces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're st I'm standing here, it's because of uh, gravitation, because of uh, a law of attraction, a physical law of attraction. So all the planets, everything, the, the whole universe is, uh, is in place because of, of these laws, uh, physical laws of attraction. Now in the spirit, the spiritual realm is not very different from the natural realm. There's also attractions. And last week we've seen some fatal attractions. You remember we talked about, even we, I mentioned a movie, Fatal Attraction. We talked also uh, about how God established a world uh, in, in which He trusts that we will be attracted to Him. And uh, I, I want to start with a, with a funny story, if, uh, if you don't mind. And uh, it's about this couple that uh, wanted to get married. Uh, two two young, young, uh, young guys, a, a young man, a young woman. And uh, just before the, 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 the wedding, the, the ceremony, she was very sad. So uh, mom asked her, hey, what's going on with you? Aren't you happy because you're going to get married? And, uh, and she said, mom, you know how it is. You know the, the terrible breath that I, that I have. And uh, it's, it's so bad and I don't know what I'm going to do. Because then he's going to find out about me. I don't feel confidence because of my bad breath in the morning and uh, you know you know how it is mom in the morning it's terrible it's it's like a sewer it's horrible and so mom said you don't need to worry darling you, you just make sure when you wake up you don't say a thing after you get married don't say a thing you just go to the to the washroom you brush your teeth and uh, and you will be fine you see you'll be fine just just make sure you, you just don't, don't, don't say a thing in the morning. So she started to feel more confident, said, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. But at the same time, the young man was talking to dad and he was saying, oh, dad, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. You know my, my stinky feet? It, it's terrible. You know, it, I, it, the smell of my feet, I don't feel confident of what's going to happen. And, and so, so dad said, oh, don't worry, here's what you do. Make sure you sleep always with your socks. <laughs> Never take your, take your socks uh, off. And in the morning you take a shower and you'll be okay. So they were okay. So the, 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 the marriage ceremony happened, they got married, they were on their honeymoon, everything went fine. In the morning she will say a thing, she will go and brush her teeth. He, he will always uh, uh, use his socks while he was sleeping. And uh, one morning as they, they were sleeping, he wakes up and uh, doesn't know where he is. And suddenly he realized he has lost a sock. He said, oh my God, I've lost a sock. So he started looking for the sock uh, uh, under, under the, 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 the bed, the linen. And where's my sock? Where's my sock? Where's my sock? He was so worried. Oh, she's going to find out. She's going to find out. Suddenly she wakes up and asks, what happened? What happened? And he said, oh no, you've swallowed my sock. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, <laughs> well, let, let's move on. And, uh, <laughs> but, but you know, when there's an attraction for someone, we can overcome all sorts of things. <laughs> all smell. All right. So I, I also tell jokes and mine are better than Joe Austin's. <laughs> now we finished last uh, week by mentioning the encounter that Jesus had with Nicodemus. And, uh, and, and he told us Moses uh, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So, and uh, John the Baptist, we know from, uh, from the Bible, Matthew 3, it says that he wear a camel a garment uh, and uh, a leather belt and uh, he ate locusts and wild honey. Wow, what a diet. And it says that then Judea, uh, Jerusalem and all Judea uh, and uh, all the region about the Jordan were going to him. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. So here we see that a supernatural attraction begun. People were attracted to this man. Did he have anything attractive in him? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? 
He lived in a weird place in the desert. So he, he, was, he was in a beautiful place. It was the desert. Close to the River Jordan, which is kind of yellowish, uh, muddy. It's not, a, it's, not a, you know, it's not like the St. Lawrence River. It's a muddy river. And uh, uh, his clothes were weird. You know, camel hair and, uh, and a leather belt. And he ate a diet of bugs dipped in honey. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's, I, don't, I don't see it very attractive. You, you, you think it's attractive? You know, if, if someone told you, okay, there, there's a guy over here close to the Richelieu River, and he dressed in camel clothes, and he, uh, he eats bugs, and we go, go there to see him and be baptized. <laughs> I'll say, I have better things to do, you know. I don't know, I don't know why should I? But what happened with John the Baptist was supernatural. Mm. So in, in the natural, there's nothing really there. And, and his message was, was awful. Because he, he will insult people. People will come, he'll call them vipers. You know, fiery snakes. <laughs> he, will, he will name the sins by their name. Remember the fiery snakes from last week? Yeah. So, so this is John the Baptist. But supernaturally, something is happening. People are crossing the river, they're going to the wilderness, they're, they're gathering around this man, and there's huge crowds. Now, later on in the, in the Gospels, we see that uh, the disciples started now to follow Jesus. And John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, look, he's baptizing, and all are going to him. All are going to him. So, uh, there's a shift in the attraction. People that used to go to John, now they feel an attraction to Jesus. And so, so Jesus, uh, uh, so uh, John answered them and said, A person cannot receive one thing uh, unless it is given him from heaven. So, by other words, he's telling the disciples, Heaven gave him this power <clears throat> of Attraction. So Jesus attracted the multitudes. And we can say, oh, he attracted because of the miracles, he attracted because of the way he spoke, he attracted. And, and this is our human way of reasoning. Because, in fact, people were attracted not knowing why. Not knowing why. You know, sometimes people are attracted to places and we don't know why. You know, in, in the world sometimes uh, people, uh, they are in business, and this is the business I've seen, just to give you an example. And in business they, they decide to do a club, and they decorate the club, and it's awesome, it's beautiful. But then there's another club with cheaper decoration, uh, everything's cheaper, the place is uh, old, but that old club has more people going there than the first one. And people say, oh, it's drugs, it's this, it's that. There's, there are many factors, but as in the, in, in the kingdom of God, people are attracted, the kingdom of darkness also has a way of attracting people. Okay? All right, so, so let me uh, set this uh, uh, straight. Now, after Jesus resurrected, what happened? Now it's the church and we have the disciples. And it says that many signs and wonders were uh, being uh, uh, done uh, by uh, the hands of the apostles. And it says they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. So they were afraid of joining them. But see what happened. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. So in spite of that, they were afraid of joining them, multitudes were being attracted. So here we see John attracted people. The multitude shifted from John to Jesus. Now Jesus is gone and the, dis the disciples continue the work and the multitudes are being attracted to the disciples. So uh, uh, here I, I want just to show you that uh, the things of God are not, we can try to understand them in the natural, and people say, oh, they were attracted because it says many signs and wonders were regularly done. So this is why they were attracted. Listen, 
it's not signs and wonders that attract people to a church or to a, a group of people. It's the anointing of God. It's, it's the Spirit of God that attracts people. So this is the reason why uh, we, we have big churches and we have uh, huge churches uh, like uh, Rick Warren, God bless him, he's in uh, difficulties uh, this weekend. But so many people go there or they go to other places uh, and there's no signs and wonders there. But people go there. Think about it. Some cults, you know, Jehovah Witnesses. They don't have uh, signs and wonders happening there, but they attract people. Why? Because there are spiritual laws of attraction. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to understand that in order to attract people to God, there are some rules, and this is what we're going to, to learn today. Some basic things. All right, so let's move on. Godly attraction originates in serving God. So when we serve God, there's an attraction. People feel attracted by our service. And, and a, 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 great, a big mistake of churches in the, in the 20th century is to think that prayer, prayer to God, is what brings revival. Prayer is very, very important. But it's not prayer that brings revival. Service does. And when we start serving God, God pours His Spirit and people feel attracted. And now you... You're very silent because you're thinking, oh, a heresy. So show me in the word that I'm wrong. Because uh, I'm telling you, you cannot show me that I'm wrong. Because this is a spiritual law. And we see it through the Old Testament, through the New Testament. Service, service to God brings an anointing that will attract people. And there's another element that I'm going to, to mention. Now, Jesus said, if anyone serves me... He must follow me. And where I am, there will be my servant, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So, so you, you see here, the, 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 the service, the element of service is really, really important. So if we attend church, we're not going to attract people. If we serve God, we will attract people. If we serve God, if we follow Jesus, if we do what He asks us to do, if we do service, then we will see God's grace in, in everything we do. Alright? Okay? Can we understand this? Yeah. So let's move a little bit further. Now, in Acts chapter 13 it says, And after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the cross, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict what was spoken by Paul, reviling him. So here we see they're serving God, and because they're serving, what happens? Multitudes come. Are you following me? Yeah. Okay. Do we want to build a tremendous movement for God here in our area. Amen. Do you want to see multitudes coming to the Lord? Yes. Amen. Do you want to see, you know, the, also the signs and wonders and all, all, all of this happening? Amen. Amen. We want to see God present, right? Amen. So we need to serve. Amen. We need to serve. It's not just a matter of attending. We need to serve. It's not just a matter of praying. Though prayer is very, very important. It's a different category. We're not going to touch that, uh, that subject now. But because they're serving the Lord, multitudes come, and then something happens. And it's jealousy. Now, spiritual jealousy is what tries to disrupt God's blessing in a place. Mm -hmm. Spiritual jealousy. And this happens, you know, happened with them, happens in churches, happens everywhere. Spiritual jealousy. So that they're wondering, it's like John's disciples. See, John, they were all following you, and now they're following Jesus. But John didn't give up, didn't give into jealousy. John said, if he has it, it came from heaven. If people are doing this, it, it, God gave him this grace. 
And now here, we see a spirit of jealousy that tries to disrupt godly attraction. Why? Why? Because if you can discredit the people that are uh, walking in the anointing of God, you will disrupt godly attraction and you will hinder the work of God in a place. Spiritual jealousy will destroy churches, will destroy movements, will, will create spiritual voids, will create all sorts of evil things. And we need to be aware of this. When we enter the cycle, and we will enter the cycle where we'll see multitudes coming, guess what's going to happen? Amen. Jealousy. Spiritual jealousy. Now we'll have people talking against, trying to discredit, do all sorts of things, and this is the natural order of things. All right. So uh, let me mention uh, that uh, a statistic was done uh, all over the world, and they tried to figure out uh, the few cases in which people converted from Islam to Christianity. And you know it's it's very complicated when someone converts from uh, from uh, being a Muslim, becoming a Christian, uh, unless they're in Canada or United States or uh, Europe, and even though. They need to be very careful. But a few people will convert and they're ready to pay the price. Mm -hmm. And they did a statistic, a questionnaire, trying to figure out why did they move from Islam to Christianity. And you know what they, they found out? By far, the number one reason why they say they converted to, 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 to Christianity, by far, it's, they, they say, I saw the way Christians lived and I liked it. In the spirit, there is this high level of attraction when the grace of God is present. Now, when we become a spiritual magnets, <coughs> all sorts of blessings of good things happen to us. So when we are walking in attraction. Now, here's the, the key to walk in godly attraction. In James chapter 4, it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And then it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So, we, we don't uh, just draw near to God. And to draw near, it's to approach. It's to be attracted to God. It's to be attracted. And remember, last week we talked about um, uh, laws of the Old Testament that say, if someone is trying to drift you away from the things of God, you kill that person. That was the law in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, Jesus said, if you love uh, you know, your, your uh, wife, mother, sister more than me, you're not worthy of me. And we saw, why was that? It's, it's just in the sense that if something is pulling us away from God, uh, we should uh, annihilate, kill those things in our life. And, and now here we see that when we draw near to God, something happens. We have more of Him in our lives. In order to do so, he says, clean, clean your hands. And your hands talk about your actions. It's what you do. It's your service. So your service has to be clean. And your heart cannot be double-minded. You need to be single-minded. You cannot be divided in the things of God. And then in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever will draw near to God, see the expression again? To be draw, to draw near to God. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. When you draw near to God, you need to have the second most important element in terms of attraction. First we talk about service and now here we see faith. Okay? And it says that we need to believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. So faith, without faith and works, we will get nowhere. Faith without works is dead. So we need the two. It, it's like, like when you, you plug something to a socket, you have the positive and the negative. Without having the positive and the negative, you won't have power. There's no power. There's no light. If you, so, so when something is not working, we have a, an electrician there, um, right Marquis, we go there and we check and we see if there's something wrong with the wire and if it's, there's something wrong with the wire, we won't have power, things don't work. In the spirit, 
things will not work without service and faith. Service and faith. So uh, here uh, it talks about uh, um, drawing near to God and without faith we cannot uh, be in Him. So here's where prayer enters and listening to the Word of God. So, so, so when people say, let's pray for revival, yes, we pray for revival. But if there's no, no works, if we, don't, we have no service, revival is not going to happen. Okay? So other people, they just do works. They don't have faith. When we combine the two, this is when godly attraction starts to happen. And it, it's in all levels of our life. What do you need to attract? We need to become more attractive. Attractive. Let me bring this to a close. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, going to, I'm about to finish. But let me start to mention something that we will talk about next uh, session. Probably next week or the week after. It's uh, how we attract also people. Remember Jesus said, follow me and I'll teach you how you can become fishers of man. You know, fish are attracted to bait. Right? So fishermen use bait. And uh, all different fishermen use different things. And they like to use different things. So in the spirit, we need to bring people into the kingdom. So, so in our uh, personal relationships, there's an attraction. So let me tell you this story about a group of American students. They went to Germany on one of those uh, 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 course uh, journey uh, uh, trips. And uh, they decided to go to, a, to a, 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 a beer place. You know, in Germany, they're huge. And people are drinking beer. And here they are. And he's drinking beer with his friends. He has some German friends also there. Decides to go to the washroom. And there's two beautiful uh, blonde German girls. And, uh, and they're looking at it to, to the guys that are passing. And one says, nine. And, uh, and so he comes out of the washroom. He feels so encouraged. He's so happy. And he said, guess what happened now? I went to the washroom and, and I, those girls were rating guys and they rated me the highest. They gave me a nine. <laughs> and so the, the German guy, he said, I, I hate to break your feelings, but in German, nine, it's zero. It's nothing. <laughs> so so uh, the guy was so frustrated because he thought he had this no, nine <laughs> score, score nine. He scored zero. <laughs> scored nine. It's nothing in German. And you know, sometimes we have these uh, expectancies, and we, uh, you know, we think that we know how to do stuff, we know how to do things, and sometimes it doesn't work. Have you ever tried to do something that it really didn't work, and you you're stuck there? You know, when we try to do something over and over, trying to ex and we expect different results, it's called insanity. <laughs> it's a definition of insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over again, yes. expecting different results. And uh, Christians are insane. Most Christians, Christians are insane. Some are, really, are even crazy. <laughs> that person is crazy. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's, it's like the, those people sometimes that they put, you know, one of those uh, sandwich signs and go downtown and say, the, the end of the world is near! And, you know, and, uh, do you think they achieve anything with that? Do you, you think people are attracted to, to that? You know, a big sign saying, repent you sinners! And everybody's passing by. Sometimes they use those uh, megaphones. Have you ever seen people like this? Yeah. I've met quite a few. I have some admiration for these crazy people, you know. I, uh, personally, I, I do, and sometimes I go and talk to them and uh, ask my wife. <laughs> and sometimes it's quite embarrassing. She used to tell me, go, come on, come on, leave that guy alone, leave that guy alone. She was embarrassed that I was going to talk to these lunatics there in the streets, saying the end of the world and all these things. Are they wrong? Not necessarily. But they're using a method that is unattractive. <laughs> now, as Christians, we can also be unattractive. We think we're a nine, but we're a nine in Germany. <laughs> what we're doing, it's it worth nothing. 
and uh, and as as uh, we understand these uh, uh, these things, we need to think about our relationship with God like a love relationship. This is my last verse. I I, I love the book uh, Song of Solomon. I don't know if you if you like that book. It's uh, it's quite a quite a book. Very interesting. And um, it starts by saying, the bride confesses her love. She let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your anointing oils are fragrant. Your, our, your name is all poured out, therefore virgins love you. Draw me after you. Let us run. The king has brought me into his chambers. Others, we will exult and rejoice in you. We will extol in your love more than wine. Rightly, they do love you. And, and this is kind of mysterious because it talks about the relationship of a groom with a bride. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, virgins or other women that want to be with the groom, but he chose one. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know, in the world, we have so many different religions and people that want to be with God, but God chose one. And the bride he chose, it's called the church. This is what makes Christianity different from these other, all other religions. Because, you know, I, I was mentioning about, about Islam, and don't, don't get upset, I've read the Quran. It has a lot of good stuff there. And there's a lot of, you know, sincere people in, in Islam that want to be with God. But they're not allowed into the chamber. There's no intimacy. So there's so many religions and people that want to be with God. But God makes his choice. And when he makes his choice, and when you're allowed into God's presence, it's like a love relationship. Remember the, the joke about the stinky feet and all that? <laughs> you know, God is perfect. The bride is being perfected. The bride cannot have stinky feet <laughs> or bad breath. The bride is perfect, has to be perfect. And the relationship with God, it's based on love and attractiveness. You know, the attraction that people feel for one another. It's very frustrating when uh, uh, someone is attracted to someone and that person says no. Rejection. Rejection. It's terrible, eh? It's terrible. What about if you feel attracted to God and God says no, what will you do? Will you change anything in the way you live? Will you change anything in the way you act, in the way you speak? Because you feel so attracted to that person that you'll do anything to be accepted. Now here's what God did. God sent His Son, Jesus, to die for you and me. And when we receive Him, when we accept Him, when we start to walk with Christ, there's a, a process that starts to happen in our life. It's like a, a cleansing, a spring cleaning of a house. You start to become a different person. And as you walk with God, as you, as you do that, you're already accepted. But there's a point. There's a point in our life in which our devotion, our service, what we do, causes God to be so madly in love with us that He says, come into my chambers. And it's a spiritual point in the life of a Christian when our relationship with God is so intimate that things happen naturally for us. That's why the Bible says, you know, I'll bless everything you, you lay your hands on, uh, into. You touch with your hands, I'll bless anything. So it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you, if, you're a, uh, if you have a business, a catering business, or if you have a, a detailing business, or if you have a cleaning business. It doesn't matter what you do. When God's grace is with you, blessing comes. Amen. And you, you recognize that blessing in everything you do. And uh, this has to do with the love relationship with God that is like marriage. We're married to God. And when we get to this point, when we achieve this point, you know, things should happen naturally. We need to listen to Him. We need to draw near to Him. We cannot ignore what He says. And then attraction starts to happen in our life. We'll explore more 
uh, in our next session. I'd like to have a word of prayer with you now. Because we can be so lost in our spiritual journey. We can be so, so far away from the things of God. That suddenly uh, our world seems to be crumbling apart, falling apart, cr crumbling down. And we, we, we're desperate for a change. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your condition. There are seasons in our life in which things are not working. So what do we need to do? We need to get close to God and don't neglect your, your service, don't neglect your faith. And when we gather a group of people that do this, you know, 120 people were able to change the whole world. They received the Holy Spirit, they walked in the anointing, and they changed the whole world. And the same is true for you and me today. You know, you can change the world. Your life can change for better. Suddenly, things happen.